In this module, I want to look at pure rotation in a plane. So um, imagine that I have a pendulum. In a pendulum, I have some rigid rod that is uh, massless relative to some heavy object. And this object can rotate in a complete circle, if I can draw one. It's fixed in the center, but it can rotate in a, in a complete circle, but that's all it can do. It can't move, and since this is uh, a fixed rod here, it can't uh, go further out or in. All it can do, this mass here, all this mass can do is rotate in a circle. So how would I describe that motion? Well, it looks like a two-dimensional problem. I can set up a coordinate axis with an x and a y. But two-dimensional problems can be more complicated than, than one-dimensional. If I could think about this in a, as a one-dimensional problem, I might simplify it a lot. And it, I can because this mass here, different color, this mass here only moves on this line. The line itself is curved, but it's constrained to move on this line. And so I can come up with a single variable that can identify exactly where that mass is at any point in time. And that variable is the angle theta. And it can be any angle, but in this case, I'm going to call the angle theta to be the angle, the angle counterclockwise from positive x-axis. And because all this thing can do is rotate in that plane, once I know this angle, I know exactly where this mass is. And so that gives me a way to describe it. Now, if it's just fixed in one place, then uh, that's fine. I'll an angle, and I know where it is. But what if this thing is moving around? What if it's one point it's here, and then a later point it's it's over here, it's over, over here, and then some later point it's up here, and then maybe it comes back. And so it's moving all around. Then, to be able to describe this motion, I, I need a function in time. And I can do that with my angle as well. So I have a new function of time that just tells me where, what angle this pendulum makes with the horizontal x-axis at any point in time. So given that I have this function, I can plot this function and see what it looks like. So I have theta as a function of a function of time. And so it might, as I have here, start uh, somewhere up here, and it may go down, and then it may come up and back and forth. I uh, don't want it to, to go backwards. <laughs> backwards in time there might be a little tricky. And so it, it might look uh, like anything. Imagine for a moment it's undergoing constant rotation. It's just moving about the circle at a constant speed. That means that the angle is changing at a constant speed as well. And so under that circumstance, under those circumstances, as we might see then the angle changing constant in time, then it would be a straight line here on the angle versus time. Now I do want to make an important point here, which is if I'm going to define this as a function of time, uh, if it makes one complete circle and continues to go around, then I want to continue to add to the angle. So if this here is 2 pi, then up here will be 4 pi, and up here will be 6 pi. So then after this crosses 2 pi here, it continues up to 4 pi. I don't want to cycle it or back around to 0 or else my or else my function it would look like a sawtooth. 
and that's going to be much harder to deal with. So that's the one important thing about defining this function is for multiple revolutions then the angles just continue to add up. Okay, so now I have a, a, a function, a one-dimensional function in time, theta, that tells me where this is. Now, if it's not constant, if it looks like uh, this function here, I might want to know how this function is changing with time. And we know how to find a function that tells us how this function is changing in time. We can do the act, the the uh, um, uh, the action of differentiation on this function. So if we then differentiate theta as a function of time, and that's the same as, as you know finding the tangent line at all these different places. That gives me a new function that tells me how the my angle is changing. And we conventionally use omega to describe that function, and we call it an angular velocity, which has all sorts of problems. First of all, the units are not of velocity. The units are of 1 over seconds. Theta does not have a unit. It's dimensionless. So once I differentiate it with respect to time, the result is 1 over seconds. So it's not a velocity. It's not a, a uh, the units of normal velocity. But we call it angular velocity because it's defined in a similar way to how we defined velocity. And it tells us how much our our position is changing. And in this case, the position is determined by the angle. Uh, instead of a, a, a unit of length. And so this omega, and that's what this is, it, it looks like a w, but uh, it's it's an omega. For, for when I write my w's, I try to keep with uh, pointed bottoms, and my omegas have rounded just for me to, to keep it straight. But so this is an omega, the Greek letter, and it corresponds to the angular velocity. So in this case, where it's con where the it rotates at a constant rate, then the angular velocity is a constant because it's the slope then of a straight line. But of course, the angular velocity doesn't have to be constant. Like in this case, the angular velocity is changing, and so we can come up with a new function that will tell us how the angular velocity is changing. And we give notationally, convention, give that alpha as a function of t. It has units of 1 over second squared, and it is called angular acceleration. Okay. And so, in, in many ways, we sort of develop something in in parallel to how we did one dimensional motion and this becomes convenient for rotation because it can be determined by your location can be determined by a single parameter uh, theta and so the one thing we'd have to worry about because in one dimension um, our velocity and acceleration were vectors we had the minus sign that determined which direction uh, the vector was these these terms are scalars, quantities, our angle, our angular velocity, and angular acceleration. As long as we're we're working in a plane, at the moment they're they're um, scalar quantities. But we we do have a direction issue because we want to know what direction the object is rotating. It can rotate counterclockwise or clockwise. So. To determine the right direction, well, let's do let's come up with a new one down here. To determine the proper orientation of positive rotation, we need, in fact, the third axis of our coordinate system. So, if I have a right-handed 
coordinate system. Then the x and y are in the plane of my screen here, and z axis is is then out of the of the screen. This is a, a proper right-handed coordinate system. And in this case, in this plane, uh, counterclockwise will be a, a positive rotation, and then clockwise will be a negative rotation. And so you do this by sort of the, the right-hand rule. If, if, if I'm rotating in the xy plane, and if I curl my hands about the uh, uh, in that plane like my well, like I'm rotating, my thumb then points along the positive x-axis, and that's a positive rotation. If I rotate my my fingers in the other direction, then my thumb is going to be pointing into the page, which is the negative z-axis, and that gives me a negative rotation. And so, at least in this orientation here, where I have x and y in the page, z is, z is out of the page, or out of the screen, then counterclockwise is positive and, and clockwise is negative. So, in this example then, as my object is rotating here, I've got a negative angular velocity that says my object is rotating in the um, uh, clockwise direction. But here it's slowing down, and so in this region, in here, I've got a negative angular, angular velocity, but a positive angular acceleration, because the negative velocity is slowing. At here, the, the uh, angular velocity is zero. And then, the angular velocity turns positive, and so during this whole area down here, just like in kinematics, our angular acceleration is positive as our angular velocity slows, then turns around, and our angular velocity becomes positive again. And so we can utilize all of the uh, inf information from, from looking at graphs and derivatives from one-dimensional motion to analyze motion uh, in a circle, rotation, where instead of uh, our position, velocity, and acceleration, we have our, our angle, our angular velocity, and our angular acceleration. So in particular, as one might predict, one of the things we'll look at is under the condition of constant angular acceleration. And in this case, our alpha as a function of t is just some constant alpha. And then doing our antiderivatives, we can calculate our angular velocity as a function of time, which is alpha times time plus some constant, which we'll call omega naught. It's our, our initial angular velocity at t is equal to zero. And then we can calculate our theta as a function of time, which is one-half alpha t squared plus omega naught t plus a constant. These are doing antiderivatives again, and I call that theta naught. It is our angle at t is equal to zero. So these, this is one of the, uh, one of the big benefits of treating uh, rotational motion is this one-dimensional problem. We can simply reproduce all of our other results in one-dimensional motion, and now we're just dealing with angles and angular velocities instead of the uh, in, instead of um, uh, linear motion. So again, for two specific points in time, which is often the case that we want when we're for uh, doing this, t sub i and t sub f, where delta t then is that time interval, 
we can come up with relationships between the initial and final angle and angular velocity and they reproduce exactly like the same form that we had before where our final angular velocity is equal to our initial plus our angular acceleration times the time interval our final angle is equal to our initial angle plus our initial velocity times time delta time interval plus one half our angular acceleration times our time interval squared and then our uh, extra equation that removes the time interval and relates our final angular acceleration with our initial angular acceleration plus two times, sorry, initial uh, angular velocity with our final angular velocity is e plus two times our angular acceleration times the uh, angle difference, which is uh, theta final minus theta initial is delta theta. So again, we reproduce uh, the same form that we had before. Uh, remember again when, when dealing with these angles that they don't stop at uh, 2 pi or 360. They continue to go around indefinitely, so other, that allows us to be able to take derivatives and have well-defined functions.